InDesign has a feature that allows you to trace any font that's loaded in your system and outline it with a vector path, which you can then use for graphic elements or for custom frames that can hold either graphics or text. So let's see how this was done. This is where I started from. So if I switch to my type tool and I select this type, I'm using a font called OL News Bytes, and it's bold, and it's set at 245 points on 230 point letting. And I've adjusted the kerning here. That's what I'm going to use as my basis. I've added a second page with just this on it that I'm going to use to recreate the example that we just saw. I'm going to select this frame. It's already selected. Go to my type menu and drag down to create outlines. Simple as that. When I do that, I am now left with paths. So if I use my type tool and try to select these characters, it's not going to work. They're no longer fonts. They are actually objects. So there's no type information. And now that I've converted this to paths, I can even use my direct selection tool and I can edit those paths by moving the points. It's just like I drew these letters with the pen tool. Okay, and let's undo that. Now that I have this custom frame, I'm going to go to my swatches panel and remove the fill. I'm changing the fill to none. So now that I've selected none as my fill, I'm going to activate the stroke and I'm going to change the stroke to black just to give it a little outline. And I'll go over to my stroke panel and I'll change the weight from one to a quarter point. I just want a subtle outline here. I'm going to next use the place command, file, place, and I'm going to navigate to this folder that is on my desktop, and I'm going to choose a photograph, NYC downtown at day, and I'll click open, and it puts the photo into the compound shape, compound path. In other words, this is acting like it's one frame with some parts masking out the photograph. And if I click, hold, and drag to reposition that photograph, you can see a little bit clearer what I'm talking about. This is like any other graphics frame. I can resize the image inside of it, reposition it. It's, it's just like if it were a square or an ellipse. It's behaving exactly the same. The last thing I want to do to match that original is add a drop shadow. So I'll simply select the frame and I'll go to my effects panel and I'll go to the panel menu, drag down to effects, over to drop shadow. The color was 100% cyan, so I'm just going to click on this color swatch to set the shadow color. Choose that from my swatches. Click OK. I want to change my opacity to 100%. Now before I do that, I'm going to turn my preview on so I can see what's happening here. So I'll change my opacity to 100% from 75, and you'll see that the color actually gets much more saturated. This edge is kind of fuzzy, and I want it to be very sharp. And I can fix that by changing the size under options from 5 to 0. Once I get to 0, that's a nice sharp edge. And the offset I'm going to leave at 7 points. And now I'm done. I'll click OK. And there's my finished solution. So this is a very simple graphic that you could incorporate into a page layout or a poster without having to go into Illustrator or Photoshop. It's all in InDesign and it's native to your file.